using MAP scores in Khan Academy. So the first question that often comes up is, what is Khan Academy? And the way that they uh, describe it on their website <clears throat> is Khan Academy offers practice exercises, instructional videos, and a personalized learning dashboard that empower learners to study at their own pace in and outside of the classroom. So that makes it for the classroom a great alternative to the typical um, kind of iPad math games that you see often where um, students will be, do, will be doing more gaming um, than they are actual learning. Um, and some of it is rote practice, which is important. Uh, but what Khan offers that those apps don't offer is that personalized learning um, where basically they can go in and choose different strands within math um, and, and say, okay, I want to learn about geometry and what specifically do I want to learn in geometry? And then there's instructional videos for each of those strands uh, that will teach them and then it gives them individualized uh, practice based on those videos that they just learned from. So the first thing that you're going to do is access your growth reports on the NWEA MAP website. Um, you'll see the left hand side has a yellow arrow pointing to MAP growth reports. Uh, that should be a window that pops up right away when you log in. If you don't see it right away, you can go to view reports and then it should have that drop down menu that includes MAP growth reports. So once you get to math growth reports, you're going to come to a screen like the white one on the right. And if you look down where that yellow arrow is pointing again, you're going to want to press on student profile. After you press on student profile, you're going to want to uh, fill in the required information and just be sure to choose the most recent test session uh, for really any student. You can switch between students pretty easily once you get inside of the student profile. Once the student profile is opened, at the top right hand corner there's a drop down menu that has a silhouette and three lines. Uh, you can use that to easily navigate from student to student within the growth reports. Uh, you'll also notice at the top that there's tabs for both reading and math. You're going to want to be on the math tab for uh, this time. So the main math map score is broken down into four main instructional areas, geometry, number, algebra, and data. It will also indicate an area of strength and an area of focus based on that specific student's map score. Uh, these are the scores that will be entered into each student's CON account so that MAP can work with CON to give recommended MAP practice. There's another really neat feature on that student profile um, that isn't needed necessarily for CON, but it's really informative. Uh, it's, if you scroll to the bottom of the page, it's a graph that shows you growth over time. So. This shows the student's scores over time and how they've changed, how that compares to where they're expected to be for their grade level uh, at that time of year. So you, like I said, you can find that by scrolling down to the bottom of those growth reports on each student profile page. So this is where things get kind of exciting. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is go to a different tab in your browser and log in to Khan Academy. Um, if you don't have a teacher account for Khan Academy already, you will need to create one. Uh, they're free and either set up each student or you can easily upload students from Google Classroom if you have that also. The second step is to, basically there's two options. You can either search MAP within your Khan account and go to the link called MAP Recommended Practice or you can use the link www.khanacademy.org backslash mappers. Uh, and those will both get you to the page where you will enter or update student scores. The third thing you're going to do is scroll down to find the drop down window that says your students. And then you can drop down and find which class you'd like to enter scores for. Now if you only have one class uploaded on Khan Academy, that will be the only option. Um, but say if you had several sections of classes that you had access to their MAP scores and wanted to do it for all sections, um, that's a way to, to incorporate that. 
There will then be a list of students in alphabetical order with the four broken down categories under each of their names. The categories match in the following way. The map terminology is geometry and that matches the con terminology of geometry. Uh, number goes with numbers and operations. Algebra score will be entered into operations and algebra and data will be entered into measurement and data. You're gonna enter scores for each child, and after you enter, be sure to press show me the recommendations. It's a small button underneath each of their um, areas where you can enter their scores uh, right under their name. Once your scores are entered or updated, you may have students log on to Khan and type map into their search bar and click on the link that says map recommended practice. It will be the same link that you went to on your teacher account um, to enter the scores for them. So once they click on that link, it should have their scores entered, uh, since you probably already did that on your end, and they should be able to scroll down and choose a strand to work on or complete. This gives them lots of choices within your preferences, so it's really nice. Uh, I've had several questions about whether there's a map button on the student's main page, and unfortunately I have not found anything like that. Uh, the fastest way I've been able to access uh, that map recommended practice is just to type map into the search bar and then go to the link. So this is a student view um, or what the student view looks like when they scroll down on that same map recommended practice link within their account. Uh, they may have some circles partially completed and that's because of their map score that was entered into the system. The map score entered will automatically complete a strand if it was shown as proficient on map. If there are still areas of focus that need to be completed, the circle may show up as completely blank or partially filled in. Students may choose a strand to work on or can even go back to the top of the page where the scores are and you can have them click on a specific instructional area. Another option is to have students come back and enter their own scores using the same map recommended practice link that they would search for when they are ready to work on map practice. I love this option personally because it gives a teacher an opportunity to individually conference with each student about their MAP score. Um, this way they understand what the, you know, the writ terminology means and um, that when they're working on CON, they're constantly working to increase their writ score. Uh, this goes really well with the growth mindset that we're promoting within classrooms. So when thinking about how you see this working in your classroom, um, one, one way that I've found it to be most useful in my own is to have this as an option that students can do once they're done with their district non-negotiables like DSR, fact practice, and independent work. Um, this way they're still able to learn new things through videos and show their learning but can also stop at any time for um, say if you have flex grouping going on within the classroom. Uh, I take one or two days of flex grouping time to update scores once a new MAP score is available for each student. Um, so this is nice because it gives me a chance to, like I said, individually conference with student, but it also isn't taking away from that instructional time um, or whole group that's so important to you know, keep going with kind of the curriculum guide so that everything uh, is taught before they uh, take their map test in the spring. So these are a couple of links that I found just searching on Google um, that kind of help problem solve through anything you might come across when trying to get MAP uh, to work with Khan Academy. If you have questions beyond that that can't be answered with those links, please feel free to contact me through email. Uh, my email is mosul.sarah at westside66.net. Um, or, you know, talk to your building principal, and if, if you have questions, um, they can certainly bring those to me as well. Uh, I hope this helps.